Man, I promise you, kids can do literally anything, man. Like, look, that's a lot of times that we put our fears on kids and like what they can learn or what's possible for them. And like, we're all wrong, man. Like, we I don't know what it is about adults. Like, sometimes we we just put these these level like these like set levels for kids. Like, oh, you can only do second grade, or this is what you're supposed to do. I think in many cases, if kids have the proper amount of support at home and they have like challenging, rigorous courses at school, there's no there's no limit to how far a kid can go. You know, um, I mean, I just think about my son. And like, you know, keep in mind, I want to talk about like some kids that are doing incredible things. But I'm going to brag real quick on my son. Like, I remember him doing algebra in kindergarten. Why Why was it that, why is it even possible for a kid to be solving problems, you know, algebraic problems in kindergarten? Well, kids don't know what they can't do. And if they are supported at home and they're challenged at home and then also at school, the impossible can happen. Well, two high school kids just did the impossible. They solved a 2000 year old problem. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem, they were able to prove it without using circular logic. I'm going to show you a video on that in a second because it is beyond my understanding. But I think the way that they break it down is really uh, good for you to see just how smart these young girls are um, that actually achieved it. So I'm going to bring up the video over here. I'm going to share my screen and I want you all to see this. And then also I, I want to tell you why this was able to happen at a school like this. So here we go. It takes a special kind of student to outsmart 2,000 years of mathematicians. At St. Mary's Academy, they have two. It's an unparalleled feeling, honestly, because there's just nothing like it, being able to do something that people don't think that young people can do. Kelsey Johnson and Nakia Jackson just gave a presentation at the American Mathematical Society's annual Southeastern Conference. They say they've proven that Pythagoras' theorem can be proved without circular trigonometry. And it might not surprise you to hear that they were the only high schoolers in the room. You don't see kids like us doing this. It's usually like you have to be an adult to do this. Now, if you're anything like me, math is not your best subject. So we're both going to do a little refresher on this one. Now, it starts with trigonometry. And trigonometry is based on Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That all sounds familiar, right? Now, what they did and that they said couldn't be done is that Pythagorean theorem could not be proved using trigonometry. That is what is known as circular logic. An idea can't prove itself. But what Kelsey and Nakia did is that they were able to prove Pythagoras' theorem without using circular logic, but they did use trigonometry. And if you're wondering how two high school seniors figure something like this out, well, it all starts with the teachers who challenge them to do the impossible. Yeah, like our slogan is no excellence without hard labor, so they definitely push on that. And we have really great teachers. And even if you don't understand their math, it's easy to see that with the right push, students can do the impossible. Sam Winstrom, Eyewitness News. <laughs> so, let me move this. All right. So, yeah. So, like, the thing is, like, they do, like, and I'm, I'm sure they have fantastic teachers. Sure of it. Like, they have incredible teachers. Uh, this is a private academy. I'm going to show you really quickly how much it costs. And I want you all to think about this, man. Like, the symptoms of what poverty can do. When, and when poverty is removed, like kids can literally do the impossible. Like it doesn't even matter. Like I'm telling you, like race and, and stuff like that is not really like the, the issue. I think when it, when it comes to like academic achievement, kids can do anything. Any child can do anything. So if you look here, like parents are paying about eighty five hundred dollars uh, plus a seven hundred and fifty dollar registration fee. What does that mean? Uh, it breaks down to let's see. I don't know. Let's call that. I'm, you know, I'm not a mathematician either. So we're going to bring out the good old calculator over here. We're going to do $8,500 plus $750, right? And we're going to divide that by maybe, I don't know, 10 months. So these parents are able to pay $925 a month on top of their bills. Like, so you get rid of, like, I mean, I hate to say this, man. Like, you know, it's the truth, though. Like, you have less kids at this school that are struggling with hunger, you know, that might have to deal with like crime or all kinds of things that are happening, um, ACEs, um, adverse childhood experiences, right? So like those things are, are probably removed. When you remove all of those things that are at the lower rungs of the Maslow's hierarchy, man, like food, safety, uh, shelter, love, uh, support, uh, when you, uh, you when those, th those needs are met, actually, when those needs are met, kids can literally do anything at any time. And it's not, it's not, I'm telling you, man, like if people, can come together and we can figure out a way to support kids and to make sure that they're uh they're healthy they're loved they're sheltered and then we challenge them at school i promise you kids in in any school in any situation in any community 
you can instantly, almost instantly turn it around. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, maybe not at, you know, like the high school level, because it might take a little bit more time to overcome those aces, but immediately, like, you know, like those le lower levels, like preschool, kindergarten, you could be begin to build a foundation that will last you for years and years to come. I think that is today's challenge in education is finding a way to address those Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy needs, man, those bottom, those bottom tier needs and figuring out a way to support those kids and those families so that when they come to school, you could challenge them and push them as far as they could possibly go. I think we need to remove some of the barriers uh, that kids go, uh, have in front of them, like when it comes to like grade levels and stuff like that. I think sometimes it might be based on maturity, but kids need to be pushed as far as they're willing to go, as far as they're capable to go. Um, and we should not put our own barriers on kids at all. Let's let them fly. And these uh, two young ladies were able to go out and do that. And I don't want to minimize, like, you know, like the stress that parents and um, everyone goes through and stuff like that. But I think that schools, communities, mayors, like all of us, we need to figure out a way to put our arms together to figure this, uh, this situation out. If we could lock our arms around each other, work together, I really think that we can make a better world and we could have more students accomplishing the possible. Let me know what y'all think. I mean, I strongly believe this. I believe that a lot of our problems are um, based on. Uh, societal factors inside of schools. Um, I do not believe that there are inherently only schools failing students. I think there is a combination of failures. There's a calamity of errors that I think that we can correct if we work together. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm